working every single day. Amen? I still remember any time we have a testimony time, I always remember uh, a good friend of mine who gave his testimony every time we had testimony time, and we all knew it by heart, but it was, it was about testimony time because he was an atheist and a friend kept inviting him to church and finally he just went just so he'd quit asking him. <laughs> and they had a testimony time and he, he got saved because he heard people talking about God doing something in their daily lives. And he was blown away. <laughs> he had heard about God being up there and on his throne and all of that, but he had never heard anybody say anything about God doing something in their daily life. And he gave his life to Christ because of it. He, uh, that, so uh, testimonies are a powerful thing, amen? When we praise God, when we thank him for what he's done, and show, we also show other people what he's done. Hey, we're continuing in Revelation. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Revelation verses uh, chapter 8. And I think we might get to chapter 9 today. We're going to try to go through chapter 8 and 9. Um, we are in part 13 of our march through the book of Revelation verse by verse. If you don't have a Bible, please grab one of those underneath uh, some of the chairs that have little racks in them. Want everybody to have God's hand, God's word in their hand, whether it's a paperback or in your phone or however you uh, have it. Uh, I want to give you a quick little review. Uh, give all of us a little review, just starting with chapter six because that's where we got into the seals being opened in the scroll, and it's really important to remember sort of that visual. We don't have any slides today, so we're just going straight through. Um, so. Uh, if you're taking notes, you're on your own, but I believe in you, you can do it. <laughs> um, but just remember, chapter six starts the seals of the scroll being opened. The scroll is representative or symbolic of the end times, of the tribulation time. And so there's these seven seals that only Jesus Christ is worthy to open. We just sang about that. And he breaks them off one by one. Um, and we get to the scroll or the end times being opened up. Uh, again, the first six seals are open. We talked about how it's very possible that the first five seals have already occurred in our, in our life and before our lifetime. Uh, but up till now, uh, we're waiting on that sixth seal to be broken open. If you recall, that's at the end of chapter six where three things happen kind of at the same time. Uh, the natural disasters is the main thing where there is an earthquake felt all over the world. And I tell you what, there's more earthquakes. Every year, I saw a graph the other day, every year, every year, the earthquakes around the world just go up and up and up with how many they are, how powerful they are. It's really interesting to see that. But in that sixth seal that's open, the, the earthquake is felt all over the world. The sun is black and the moon doesn't shine and stars fall from the sky. So we won't miss that one. We will really be able to tell when that happens. The good news for us as believers, as we see from God's word, is there will be a rapture of believers. Amen? Amen. 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 And we talked about that. And then at the same time, the sealing or protecting of 144,000 Jews. So we talked about all that and that leads us up to Revelation chapter eight and the seventh seal being broken open and that's where we're gonna jump into today. So let's pray before we jump into that because we wanna ask God's help in understanding all this. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've shown us some of what you're going to do in these last days. We thank you so much you didn't just uh, say, hey, I've got a plan, but you don't need to worry about it. I'll take care of it. You've shown us, Lord, these things, and many of them, so many, we've already seen happen. Your prophecies that have been fulfilled. We thank you for that. And Lord, uh, as we go through Revelation today, we need your help and understanding because we want to know as much as we can. We won't know it all, Lord, because we're not you. You're the only one that knows it all. Uh, and you want us to have some faith too. Uh, but at the same time, Lord, there are some things you want us to know and understand for ourselves. 
But also, Lord, you want us to know and understand these things so we can share them with others. Lord, there are so many people who need Jesus. Help us to know you more, to understand you and your word more, and to share you more. Be with us right now. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, Revelation chapter 8, verse 1 says this. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. We want to stop right there because that's a big deal. Nothing we read anywhere in Scripture about heaven is silent. There is always praise going on. There is always celebration. There is always angels singing. There are, the elders are falling down. There's always this praise and celebration going on. So this is huge. When the seventh seal is open, that there is silence, silence, in a place where there's never silence for about half an hour. So I want us to just pause right here and think about this. Um, there are several different uh, sort of theories or ideas about what this means and, 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 and what this is representing. Some believe this has already happened. Uh, some believe that this happened at Jesus' death, which you could kind of, you know, is plausible, where at Jesus' death there was silence uh, in heaven. Some believe this already happened and it was during the destruction of Jerusalem during the A.D. 300s. That's possible and plausible. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I personally believe and I'm convinced of. I, I believe and I'm convinced that this silence in heaven is a collective moment of reverent silence because of what's about to take place. And I say that because as we've been studying this and we get that mental picture of that scroll, the seventh seal is open. So none of this stuff, you know, people have different opinions and ideas on when these things are happening. And, and we can all have our own opinions on that because the main thing is that we believe is that this is going to happen. It's like the rapture. You can believe that it's going to be pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation or post-tribulation and you're still saved. It's, it's the doctrine of, rap, of the rapture that we're interested in and we can all kind of have little ideas of, of when it happens. And that's sort of the same here with this. But from, as I pray and study over many, many years, I am truly convinced that this silence is heaven just taking a deep breath because they know, everybody in heaven knows what's going to happen. The, the, the seals are finally off the scroll. You can't open the scroll until all the seals are open. The seventh seal comes off, the scroll opens, that means it's time. It's time for, it's judgment time. It's God's wrath time. And, and everybody knows what is coming and it's awful. And we're gonna get into the seven trumpets, uh, with, which is the beginning of God's wrath on earth. And so I believe, I I'm, I'm really believe that this is heaven and everyone in heaven who's been waiting so long, think about it, waiting so long and wow, it's finally here. And it's, and it's awesome and it's awful all at the same time, are you with me? Now, I also believe that we'll be in heaven and a part of that half hour of silence. So th this very probably and could be, this is us seeing too, like wow, we always, we've always heard about this. We've always heard we'll be in heaven one day. <laughs> you know, and we're there and we're celebrating and then this seventh seal opens and oh my goodness, the tribulation is about to occur, wow. This is, this is actually going to happen. If you think about it, Jesus talked about it more than 2,000 years ago. And we've been in this, and, and really this is really the, the clincher for me, we've been in this age of grace since Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Are you with me? We've been in this age of Jesus is gently knocking at everybody's heart's door. We can all do whatever we want while we're alive. That he doesn't strike us down, you know, with judgment. We, we're free to do whatever we want. But now that the tribulation starts, guess what? All that grace is over. Do we understand that? That makes me pause. <laughs> the age of grace is over. And now it's judgment day. 
There's going to be a great white throne judgment. We'll get into that later. But for everyone who's on the earth, the grace period is over. God pulls up his Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that too a little bit later. And, and wow, you're, you're just running for cover and if you're still here. And that's, talk about sobering. Talk about uh, needing to pause for a moment. I really believe that's what it is because God has been so gracious to us. Think about the grace that each one of us has been bestowed. I mean, each and every day, the forgiveness of every single sin we've ever committed. And the older I get, the more it means to me. <laughs> you know, the longer you live, the more you're like, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> a lot of grace, amen? Praise him for his grace. But now, woo, it's like, oh, wait a minute. It's over. There's, there's no more grace. It's wrath and it's judgment. There's a group that I'd like you, uh, I'm just going to throw out to you. It's called, uh, it's a ministry called Rock Island Books. And I don't mention many names or ministries, but it's, this one's really fascinating. I don't know if any of you have seen, they've got some YouTube videos and there's, there's so many YouTube videos, are there not? <laughs> there's a YouTube video for every single thing. You cannot come up with a subject where there's not a YouTube video. But I came across this one because I, I, you know, I'm interested in prophecy and things like that. So I'm, I'm, uh, I, you know, I look around at certain things. Um, but uh, Lovick is the guy's name, who, uh, Dr. Lovick, who's in, in charge of this ministry. He laid out, and I just want to share this briefly with you, just to kind of emphasize where we're at. He laid out this incredible... Um, diagram uh, of numbers and, and the different years that since Jesus died and, and the different prophecies that have been fulfilled. And I'm sure some of you have seen some of these before. Um, but his was different and his was interesting in the way that his numbers matched up with Daniel's 70th week, if you've studied that and how that comes into Revelation and the fact that a day is a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. And Here's the, the fact that is undeniable as we look back in history that we have from Jesus' death until 2030, the year 2030, that's 7, 000, that will be exactly 7,000 years. So that's, that's the truth, you know, that's just as, as you mark back time, that's 7,000 years. So most of you know that seven is God's favorite number, it's his number of completion and and so when you start thinking about that, uh, he, he started laying out some things about all the different prophecies that have been fulfilled. And he laid a pretty good case that 2030 would be the completion of God's plan for, for planet Earth, for all, for all of us. Uh, now, some of you are sitting there thinking, well, okay, we've got a few, few years. Okay, not too bad. <laughs> but you've got to take into consideration the seven years of tribulation in that. So you gotta take that off because everything's not completed until the end of the tribulation. So you take that off and that's 2023. And then he had a couple other things for a two year period that I, you know, would take a long time to go into. Um, but his, his thing, and he was very adamant about it. He said, I feel like God has put me on this planet. That's how strongly he felt about this. And I'm just letting you know this. You don't have to believe this, but just to understand that many people are saying we're living in the last days. And I'm saying we're living in the very last days. But he said he believes, and he, he had all his numbers there to back it up, uh, that Jesus would return, the rapture would happen this fall. So the end of August through October, that's his timeline. And he said at the latest, the end of September. So I'm just throwing that out there to you. <laughs> to think about and we'll find out if it's true or not, right? Um, but the, the, re the only reason I'm bringing it up is to help us understand that God is gonna keep his word. He is going to keep his promises, amen? He, he is faithful to every single one of his promises and as we study these end times, they are going to happen. 
at some point. We've been living in such a long period of grace, but we know from God's word here that it's going to end at some point. Um, so that's verse one. Let's go on to verse number two, and we'll get into these trumpets. Verse number two, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Verse four, and the smoke of the incense and the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. We'll stop right there. This is sort of a, just like a little preparation for the end to start. So we have the half hour of silence where it, it, it's silence. You know, you can say whatever you want to about what it's for or why it is, but all of heaven is silent for a half an hour. And then this happens. I wanted to dig into this just a little bit with a couple things. Uh, this much incense, this is uh, new for some of us, or, or at least not, we don't know a lot of, about it. But if you think about the Old Testament sacrifice, incense was used to praise and worship God. And it was specifically a symbol of prayer and the prayers of God's people going up to God. So they would burn incense and the, a sweet aroma would, would go up to remind them of prayers. But also I want to re remind you that before Christ died, the avenue of prayer was a one-way street where people prayed, but God only spoke to the leader of Israel. He only spoke to the leader and or the prophets. So this incense represents sort of the Old Testament. And then you have the prayers of all the saints in the New Testament days. It's a beautiful picture of, of everything coming together and everything being complete. And this rises together before the throne of God. And you can remember, or some of you know uh, what a censer is. It's just like this little cup. Uh, the, I believe the Catholic Church, some churches still use it. Uh, well, they'll have a little, like a golden bowl. It's only about so big and put some incense in it and they'll have a little a chain or something and they'll wave it around and, and the incense is burning in it and, and the aroma, that's, that was done in the Old Testament times. And this is the picture we get though before the throne of God and it is the sort of calm before the storm. And I, I really believe that this is God remembering why he's about to do what he's about to do. Because this is, God is love, but he is also just, and he punishes sin, unless Jesus Christ has forgiven us from our sin, amen? So this is his judgment, and, and just like love is who God is, God is also just. And so in this moment of these things coming together and this aroma before the throne of God, I really believe that he's remembering and, and we are remembering all of the chances that everyone has had to trust in Jesus, all of the grace that God has bestowed on everybody for so many years to trust in God, all of the opportunities he has afforded everyone on planet earth for salvation and for being saved. But now this is the time when, when that is over. Go to verse number five with me. Verse five and six says this, then the angel took the censer and he filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So this is symbolic of God's judgment is coming to earth. Please hear me when I say this. Some might say that uh, Christians will go through part of the tribulation or, or some, of, uh, some people believe a, a whole lot of it. Um, I really don't believe that there's any way that God's going to let his children, uh, let an angel throw anything at his children. That's my thought. We're, if we're on earth and, and the angel is just throwing this symbolic uh, sensor to the earth and there's earthquake, I, I honestly believe God, that's God's wrath that we are not appointed to, amen? 
And so the great tribulation, the end of days begins. So verse number seven, let's get into it. The first trumpet of God's wrath. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees burned up and all green grass was burned up. This appears to be very literal. These things don't really need a whole lot of interpretation. You have hail and fire mixed with blood raining down on the earth, a third of all the trees. Can you imagine a third of all the trees burning up? We've got these wildfires that have started up again uh, in uh, California and in the area, uh, especially right around, if you recall a couple years ago, you remember when uh, the little town of Paradise, California, burnt up. We, had a, we have an Alliance Church there, and they really were a, a, like a rescue place for everybody who was in that area, and they really ministered to a lot of people. I was watching something the other day that, that whole town is still, like after two years, it's, it's, there's nothing there. It's just charred trees. Uh, or there's a couple people that are living in RVs like on where their property still is, but there's nothing there. But now there's more wildfires that are coming right up into the same area. It's really unbelievable. But if you think of it, uh, if all the trees in the United States completely burned up, that would not be, I mean, what would that be? Like one one thousandth of all the trees on planet Earth. So you're talking about one third of all trees burning up. That's, that's unheard of. That is unreal, an unreal number and all grass burned as well. Let's go to verses nine, uh, verse eight and nine. We have now the second angel sounding, verse eight. Something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Again, this is really hard to fathom that a third of the sea becomes blood. Uh, you can remember when we had uh, the oil disaster out in the Gulf and how it, how it spread and how bad it was for hundreds of thousands of people in that Gulf area. But we're talking about a third of the sea turning to blood, a third of the fish and animals. We've got, we're used to a little bit of, uh, of the red tide with, with fish dying and uh, all sorts of other animals dying. But man, a third of all fish and animals in the sea dying is really hard to even imagine. And a third of the ships destroyed. Let's go into verse 10. Then the third angel sounded, a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood. Many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Wormwood means bitter. Uh, this is unimaginable too, a third, one third of all the fresh water now. So one third of all the fresh water, rivers and springs become bitter and many men die from that water. Let's continue, verse number 12 and 13. Then the fourth angel sounded. Think about this, a third of the sun was struck. Can you imagine? I mean, we've got scientists and people watching the sun all the time and man, when there's like a little flare up, you know, they'll, it'll be in the news or something or there'll be a big headline, there was a flare up or something. Can you imagine one third of the sun being struck that we basically depend on for life? One third of the moon, a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, likewise the night. I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet and of the three angels who are about to sound. I want to go right into Revelation chapter 9. If you'll turn there, we're going to try to make our way through, uh, might get through all of chapter 9. We'll see. We'll go through some of it. But let's continue. Chapter 9, verse 1. Then the fifth angel sounded. 
And I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. Smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them were given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse 4, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man in those days. Men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. Verse eight, <clears throat> they had the hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. Verse nine, they had breastplates like breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, his, he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. I wanna stop right there one theory about this trumpet is uh, for those that believe it's already happened uh, was the Gulf War. And I, I just wanted to throw that out to you, uh, mainly because Saddam Hussein, you remember him, Saddam, his name means destroyer and that's what Apollyon means, it means destroyer. And you remember how much smoke was billowing. And it was about five months uh, before they capped all those wells. You remember they set the wells on fire and, and all of that happened. Um, however, these locusts uh, didn't, didn't see any of that with this amazing and bizarre stuff that they looked like that he details here and torturing men for five months. So that's a little bit of a stretch. And still, you got to recall that when the, before the seventh seal opens, not, the, the scroll can't be open until that seventh seal comes off. So we're still, we're still thinking about that. Hey, I want to go on to verse number 13, the sixth angel. Uh, follow along with me. The sixth angel sounded. I heard a voice from the four horns on the corn, the golden altar, which is before God saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been, listen, prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Think about that. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. The heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. Out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. They'll t their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Verse 21, and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. We're gonna stop right there. This is commonly referred to as the Sixth Trumpet War, or some people will call it World War III, because it seems very clear that this is a great world war. Think for a minute about one third of all people being killed in this war. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just startling. Two things I want to point out here. We're going to draw our thoughts to a close this morning. 
Uh, the first one is verse 15. So the four angels who had been prepared, please catch this, they have been prepared for the hour, for the day, for the month, for the year. They were released to kill a third of mankind. Do we understand that our God is a God of preparation? He is a God of planning. And he has this all laid out. Do we understand that? He has this plan laid out and it's going to happen. Are you with me? It is going to happen and he has prepared these things and laid them out. Also, do we understand why God is going to such great lengths in these very last days? I mean, if it was me, maybe you, we'd just like have a day where it's all over. Boom. I mean, that would be, because I'm like the easy guy. Let's do it the easy way, <laughs> you know? And man, it's such an elaborate plan with the seals, with these trumpets. I mean, you know, and we're not even into the bowls and all these other things we'll get into in, in this tribulation time. But I want to give you the reason why God is doing all these things. 2 Peter 3, 9. Jot that down or you can turn with me now. 2 Peter 3, 9. Gives us a good clue as to why, why all this stuff. And it also tells us something else. 2 Peter 3, 9 says this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And he's talking about coming again in the, these end times as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? That's what it's all about. That's what God is all about. And that's why he's lengthening this out. That's why it's seven years instead of seven minutes. You can still be saved in the tribulation. You got to go through it. But you can still be saved if you believe and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you don't take the mark of the beast. And we'll get into some of that. But he is, he was, he's got to give his wrath because he's just. But he is so merciful and long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish. Amen? That's his heart. He wants all to come to repentance. And there's great news because there's still time. Okay, so the not so great news is that time will be up soon. That time's gonna be up soon. Great news is there's still time. We still have today. But the not so great news is it's, it's going to come to an end where that grace period is over. And two things I wanna share with you at the end and just to give you as a challenge. Have you received Jesus? Have you received him and believed in him so that you know that you know that you know that on that day, when the trumpets sound to call us to heaven, that you'll be in that group. And then number two, are you sharing Jesus? Are you sharing Jesus? Because we're not only called to receive him, we're called to share him. Give you a quick little story. I was telling some other people about this this morning. Uh, I had lunch with Nate down in South uh, Fort Myers. I call it South Fort Myers. Anything over the bridge to me is South Fort Myers, I'm just saying. Uh, but I went way down there because that's where he works. Coming back on 41, somewhere around that Page Field area. I, I pray about it. I pray about it as I go. But there's this one place that I just, I can't go by without stopping. It's Krispy Kreme. I just, I can't. I can't. You got to pray for me because I can't. It's just, it just calls my name. And I have to just turn in. Pray for me. So I turn in, get a dozen donuts, and they have a deal. Hey, we have a deal today. If you want a second dozen, it's only $1. So who's not going to take that deal? So yes, give it to me. I know I don't need it, but come on, it's only a dollar. So I'm driving home, and I'm thinking, you know, I should give that dozen to somebody else. I don't need even the dozen I have. And I feel kind of bad that I have two dozen now. So... I should give that to somebody. So I'm thinking as I'm driving and then I'm right there at this music store. And I shared a couple of weeks ago about this guy at the music store. And I take my keyboard there on a regular basis and I've gotten to know some of those guys in the music store. And I shared the story of this guy thinking about uh, killing himself. And I prayed with him, shared the Lord with him, gave him some things to read. And I hadn't seen him since then. I stopped in one time, but he wasn't there. 
Um, so I thought, I'll, I'll stop in, see how he's doing, and give him some donuts, encourage him. So I stop in, and uh, he's with a customer, so I put the donuts down on the counter. He finishes with his customer, and he comes over, gives me a hug, and he's doing really good. Praise the Lord. Thank you for praying for him. Um, he's, he's been praying a lot more. He's reading this, you know, some God's word that I gave him and some other stuff. Um, so, uh, but he had some other customers there, and so I couldn't talk very long. But I said, hey, uh, I left you some donuts. He's like, oh, thank you. That was really cool. I said, but you have to share. And he said, I'm not going to share. <laughs> and I thought he was just joking, you know, so I, I kind of laughed and walked out. And I looked back, and I'm like, I don't think he was shy. I said, you got to share those. And he went, no, I'm not going to. So he went with a customer and, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't know. Maybe he was really hungry. Um, I get my car and I go down the road and I'm, I, I kid you not. Well, first of all, I told the keyboard guy who I know really good um, that fixes the keyboards all the time. I said, hey, I put some donuts up front. Make sure you go get some. I told them to share so I told him that. I get my car and go, two minutes. I mean, two minutes, I get a phone call, and it's the keyboard guy telling me they won't share donuts with me. <laughs> and he's really upset. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to bring you some. I'll just bring you some. Uh, he's, no, 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 don't. I'll, it'll be okay, but, but don't drop stuff off with those guys up front. They never share with me. <laughs> he was like really upset. I went, I need to pray for them more often. So... Anyway, uh, as, as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking of, what, you know, our closing, uh, our closing challenge. You know, have we received the Lord and tasted to see that he is good? Man, you taste those Krispy Kremes and it's over. You will love them the rest of your life. It's, it's, it's a million times that with Jesus Christ. Amen? 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 You taste and see that the Lord is good. And all you want of Jesus is more. Amen? But please, we've got to move past, I'm not sharing. <laughs> we've got to share Jesus, especially now that his coming is so close. We've got to share him. We can't keep it in. We just can't. The last thing Jesus said was, go. Go. Go and tell. Maybe God calls you to go across the world. Maybe he just calls you to go across the street, but we've got to go. Go into a store. Go, go the, here, go there, but go and make disciples. Plant seeds of the gospel. Water seeds other people has planted. And God promises he will give the increase. Amen. Will you bow your heads and we're going to close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for being so good. We sing that song, good, good Father. And that just scratches the surface. You've been so gracious to us, so merciful to us. You sent your son, Jesus, to take all of our sins on himself and wipe them out. Hallelujah, what a...
God bless you. Have a great week.